Hello, I am happy to be joined with JJ Gonson, who is the owner of One Somerville. Uh, is that correct? Are you the owner, JJ? Um, so we're an S Corp. So technically, I'm the president. Okay. But I'm the only officer. All right. So uh, chief I can, investor. <laughs> chief investor. I'll refer to you as President Gonson for the rest of the interview. <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> well done. Uh, so we're excited. I'm excited to finally talk to you because, uh, as I was saying uh, before we started the interview, that your name has come up uh, a number of times as I've been talking to uh, businesses in and around Somerville and, and some people in and around Somerville, uh, like the Main Streets organizations, because um, they're all excited about what you've done with Once, uh, how you've adapted. Uh, your concert venue uh, in a very unique way that still serves as a concert venue um, while still, you know, being safe. Obviously, you're closed and, you know, you've had to adapt because of the danger of all of, you know, yeah. everything that we that we know. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess everything that we know, everything that we know and everything that we don't know. Um, uh -huh. So essentially, like, how how did that decision come about to to go virtual? Um, um, yeah, that's such a good question. Um, I first heard about the concept of a virtual venue, a virtual production, a virtual experience, whatever you want to call it, about four years ago at a conference called FlyCon, which was really one of the most amazing crash courses in music industry around booking and venues that you could ever hope to get. And I went several years. It was a convention or a conference, not a convention, but a conference of um, venue owners, booking agents, managers, merchandisers, amazing, amazing, like just incredible. Anyway, about maybe four or five years ago at FlyCon, um, they were talking about virtual reality and they had the little goggles and you could step in and experience. And the idea was, what they were talking about was this increasing of a revenue stream in an increasingly difficult market, how to increase a revenue stream for the bands and the venues by selling virtual tickets as to an experience that's being had live. You have the cameras in the audience and you feel as if you were in this experience. So this is something that I knew that my ticketing agency was working on years ago. So it already kind of had passed through my space, <laughs> my brain space. Um, and I don't quite know how to explain it, but um, I've always been a little bit of a perpetual motion machine and I don't have a tendency to hit a wall and stop. I have a tendency to hit a wall and just keep bashing at it until it starts to move. <laughs> and then maybe it breaks or maybe I turn the other way and start bashing against a different wall. But <laughs> um, it never occurred to me to just be like, no, you know, like, so um, there was a couple of people who, um, because of what happened, and anybody in the music industry can speak to this, what is still happening with the understanding around touring and the timelines, um, we had to have people to manage the cancellations and the postponements and to handle the ticket refunds right. and things like that. So. I wasn't alone. I had a couple people who were very much venue focused and we very, we just sort of went, okay, what, what, what we're going online. And we reached out to friends and asked them to make recordings for us. And we somehow, um, we got, we got something called a PPP, which is a payroll plan. And the money has to be spent on people and the rules change all the time. It's like, Alice in Wonderland on the chessboard mm -hmm. and we um we but I, I whatever for whatever reason fortunately now you can stretch it out a little bit and we've figured out like with interns and stuff so the virtual venue is um is we're, we're working as hard as we can to develop something that's high quality and I feel like um because there was a couple of brains that all went whoop very quickly including um I, I have to give credit both to our booking manager, Bridget Duggan, but also, and also not but, and also to um, Stephen Loverme and Aaron Jeanette, who had already been filming high quality video footage in the venue. 
Whew, I've been talking for a long time, but some of the first footage that you can see from us is actually footage that they had already shot of um, Ezra, Ezra Furman is a great example, um, or and Jim Lee, which we're actually releasing today, I think, on the virtual venue channel, which is YouTube. Um, please subscribe. <laughs> Help us to monetize. Please subscribe. Yeah. Uh, it's once virtual venue on YouTube. Um, yeah. So, so it was sort of like these creative minds, this, this amazing, amazing video team and this amazing booking and management team, Chris Porter at the top of Porter Productions, phenomenal, phenomenal booking manager or booking person. So this team went whoomp. And um, then there's another guy involved, Jamie McElhinney, who is a, Boston rock, long time staple in the Boston rock scene, who is a tech person. And you have this phenomenon now of the tech people who have been waiting in the wings. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I own everybody now. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Sorry. That, that's that, exciting. Sorry that was so long. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, that was a very nice, thorough answer. Perfect. Um, so I am I am looking at, at your YouTube channel now, and uh, oh, cool. so essentially, is it that the night of the event, you know, people can the the, the ticket um, the people that buy tickets have access to this, or or how does how does it work? Talk me through the process a little bit. Well, thank you for asking, <laughs> because <laughs> nobody should ever start a new business in four months. That's a bad idea. When you start a business, you should write a business plan and it should include things like budgets and risk assessment. So in that business plan, it would probably say best practices. The recording is done in Zoom mm -hmm. where we are joined by the guest. So let's say we're talking about when, um, when we stream disc, right? Wonderful small band, totally love them. Check out their stream. They're amazing. They're on Saddle Creek. They're going to blow up. So they're like 20 years old and they're from Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. So we, we're streaming a disc live stream that they've recorded beautifully. This the amazing. And we have the band members in the zoom. So if you watch it from with, with the code that you get when you register through Eventbrite, if you watch it through that code, you get a Zoom link and you're in the room with the band. Live. Live. Wow. So you're watching probably a stream or the band's playing live sometimes. They, they do both. We sh Bring me back when we're done talking about this to how amazed I am by what the bands are producing. Okay. So you're in Zoom and you are watching this incredible, like high quality video that a band has produced streaming from Zoom. From Zoom, it's pushing to our YouTube channel, and it's also pushing to Facebook Live. Facebook Live is volatile. That's why people don't really want to use it. They use things like Twitch. Yeah. Facebook Live is a little volatile because, um, well, first of all, it's mono, and nobody wants that. But also, it has a tendency to get shut down really easily. So, like, you have somebody talking about a song that they wrote and they played their song and the stream gets taken down. Because of copyright issues, yeah. It's their song, right? Yeah. So we don't rely entirely on Facebook, but it does get the most views. So we have a Facebook event. We try to stay on it. You can watch it in any of these places. If you rev register through Eventbrite, it's free for now. All to be revealed because who knows what's going to happen, right? But at some point, if we're going to do this, it has to generate something. And we're, I would love to crowdsource an answer to that. Yeah. What should we do? Oh, people. Hmm. So <laughs> you can tell me, <laughs> I <laughs> listen. Um, we're a community, man. We're an ecosystem. Yeah. We're all in this together. We're all figuring it out. What does the market bear? What makes sense? Should it be a, should be a donation link? Because I don't know. We got to, we got to pay people to, you know, when the PPP money runs out to make these streams. So how are we going to do that? Yeah. Bring me back. Um, so then you're pushed out to these various platforms. YouTube is where it lives. So after it's over, you can see everything again on YouTube. So whatever happens stays on, what happens in YouTube stays on YouTube. 
<laughs> so you can go to our channel, which is the YouTube once virtual venue channel and subscribe. Okay. And um, you can see, you can watch anything that we've already streamed with the exception of a couple of things that got flagged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dance parties get flagged. And uh, so bringing you back, uh, how amazed are you with what these uh, musicians are producing? Thank you. Yeah. So um, when, when we got into the first couple of conversations, the first real once virtual venue meeting, um, it took about a month to get it off the ground. Um, there was a lot of conversation about what we would need to provide to a band or to an artist. And, you know, should we take the microphones? We have microphones in house that we're not using right now. Should we loan them our microphones? Should we, you know, coach them through? Like, is it best if they shoot with an iPad? And I actually, I remember being like, you know, let's check in with them first and see how much we need to provide. But we were definitely thinking about it. And um, it turns out that many, many musicians and performers, you know, we've had amazing drag shows and other things. Um, lecturers, Martin Atkins, brilliant. Um, they actually have pretty much got this under control. They... Um, they have a pretty good sense of how to make something that sounds okay. And one of the ma most amazing things is that some of them are doing amazing video editing hmm. where what we get is like a video. It's like a music video. That's awesome. It's amazing. Watch it all on our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so should people go to have the I beaten that, <laughs> Have I beaten that, that rug too many times? <laughs> should people go to the YouTube channel? I'm not sure. <laughs> and subscribe. And subscribe. Like yes. and share a video. A absolutely, absolutely. You rock. <laughs> and and so um, yeah. So you're saying like yeah, you're you're thinking about the future at this point and mm -hmm. you know, what what to do when the once the the PPE money runs out and you know wanting community feedback. You know what 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 are you thinking? What are you thinking? Like how 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 long can you sustain this and and you know, what would you like to see happen? I guess is the better question. Um, I'd really like for there to be a vaccine that can be pushed out quickly to a lot of people effectively and safely so that we can open with rock bands on the stage and 375 people in the room. That That is great. And that's yeah. the answer to that question. Uh, yeah. Um, and so circling back to um, how this, how the, like kind of the transition that you had to make. So you were primarily a, a in-person concert venue and now you're doing something more along the lines of, of uh, managing. TV. Yeah, managing a video uh, <laughs> distribution place. <laughs> um, so one of the things I should have said about this whole experience and particularly um, the chats and the comments that happen during these experiences is that a huge part of this, and you can see it, I do a little blah, blah, blah on the channel. Um, subscribe, no, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, um, I think that one of, the, one of the things it really has done is it's enabled us to present local musicians to our friends and, and their friends and their friends, and it's helped us to hug our community a little bit and that's a big part of what once is is this like safe inclusive space and we've spent you know that that really is important it, it's it's sort of the core and um so i think that there is a value to that in what we're doing when you talk about like we've closed our doors and gone virtual um i think of it as terrestrial versus virtual um, I, I don't want to begin for a second to say that this substitutes for this. They're right. just completely separate entities. They are different art forms. You're right. What are we doing now? We are running a content driven television show. We're YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <laughs> We're all going to become K-pop stands. I, I think so. Yeah. And it is interesting, you know, like working in media over at Somerville Media Center, like working, it's just seeing uh, how well people have adapted with Zoom 
and how well they've adapted, you know, with other kinds of virtual platforms. Um, and, you know, just how second nature, how quickly it became second nature to a lot of people. It's like, yes, this is not in any way a substitute for face-to-face -face engagement or being in a studio setting like we're used to. But, you know, the, the, the human brain, humans have a really great uh, ability to adapt and we're all adapting pretty well in, in that regard, I would say. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, there, there, um, and then thank God we're making art. What yeah. if people stop making art? You know, that was really for me I'm, as a photographer, and um, I don't know quite what to call what I do. It's almost like a performance choreographer. Like, so, um, at once, have you been there? Yeah, okay. So, you walk in, and there's this gold entryway. And it's lit by a huge golden chandelier that is absolutely dripping with these really interesting Mardi Gras beads, like ones that get thrown off floats with the big medallions that light up and stuff like that. And in front of you is a vintage table, glass table with tender little legs, and it's draped with a gold sequined drape. And the person sitting behind it is friendly and funny and probably covered in tattoos. We all are, it's mm -hmm. one of our common themes. Um, and you walk through these doors, these double doors, big wooden double doors, and suddenly there's a 6,000 square foot room in front of you that you totally don't anticipate because of the opulence of all, it just, you don't anticipate it. And there's a stage and there's these huge speakers on either side and it makes incredible sound into this room with chandeliers and crazy carpets and a marble bar with sparkly lights around it. And the back bar is this kind of pearlescent blue painted over with some dust, like some sparkly dust because it was designed by Irene Ferry, who is a like award-winning Roman designer. And it has these light up plexi tops so that's what I do. I create an environment. I make a party. I'm a caterer, right? I'm a party maker. So that's my art yeah. and photography. So I have to do that. It's not optional. Mm. I have to make art. Mm. We all do. I'm glad to see it. What a I'm relief. You're making art. Look at you making art right now. We're, yeah, we're making, we're making art right now. We're, we're making, uh, we're making videos. We're, we're getting the word out there. Yeah. Yeah. Getting information and, and highlighting art and excellent stuff that's happening in Somerville. Um, which is yeah. why, that's why I knew I needed to speak to you. Um, what, what else do you want to add about, about once you highlighted the YouTube channel? and how people should su su subscribe. <laughs> like and uh, share. Uh, I've noticed that you do have a, a campaign on your website. Um, do you want to- The GoFundMe? The GoFundMe, yes. Yeah, so the GoFundMe was instrumental in helping um, before, at the, at the very beginning, um, to make sure that the people who suddenly were without work were not completely, um, you know. So, uh, the, the GoFundMe has been instrumental. The PPP has been instrumental. We've, um, we've maintained, um, I, I think actually something that's super important is that my, my catering company, which is called Cuisine on Locale, which is a 15 year old locavore catering company with a mission to support farms and farmers in Massachusetts and nearby states. So we buy lots of lots of local food from farmers when we're active, but we're also closed. Right. And um, so one of the things that's going on is I've started a macaroni and cheese club called Club Mac. And every week um, you order by Wednesday for a big box, two pounds of Mac with a couple of veggie sides and it's pickup on Friday evenings. And this week, 
I can't remember what we're doing, but last week was Frito pie mac and cheese, Ooh. which was amazing. And um, we also always, well, recently we've been doing lobster mac on the regular because people love it. And then just a cheese, cheese, cheese mac. And oh, this week is Coronation Chicken Mac, which is curry and lobster. Wow, wow. And yeah. So how, how can people get mac and cheese once a week? Cuisineonlocale.com or okay. Cuisine on Locale Facebook. Okay. Yeah, if there's a storefront. And um, so, but that's, you know, that's just a little, a little thing once a week that I can do to kind of keep, keep my, my chin above the dashboard as my mom would say so um definitely letting people know that cuisine on locale is out there and we are i am um available for like if somebody wants to have like a small gathering i can do a barbecue to go stuff like that but it's um it's a who knows kind of situation who knows indeed yeah um and then uh, I drifted I, away there in the land of local food. Oh no, I eat no, local. I mean, that's you know, you're you're a, a business person with many many hats. Uh, yeah, many. It's many. actually it's actually all cuisine on locale. It's all cuisine on locale. Cuisine on locale is actually the the parent company. the foundation of it all. The parent company, as it were, of which you're the president. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm the queen. So music, music people, I know they love to plug upcoming events. So I'm going to take a page from one of our, uh, one of our, uh, member producers, Ken McIntyre, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to plug any upcoming virtual events that you, that you have, uh, in July, um, or even into to August, if you, if you have anything, uh, that far out. Uh, yeah, and- we do. Um, I, I hate this question because <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit of time for you to edit this. And so it, I have to talk about things that are a little bit further away than, um, than maybe I'm completely on top of. I could look really quickly. Sure. You can ask me about some stuff, but, um, but I can tell you about a series that I'm excited about because it's my series. Um, which is every Sunday at 1 p.m. I'm doing interviews with interviewers. So I'm interviewing the rock writers of the area, like Brett Milano and Joan Anderman and Jim Sullivan and Julie Kramer and Bradley J. people who interview and take pictures of musicians and asking them for their stories. And it's called Let's Get Critical. And, wow. And where yeah, can you and, find that? Well, you can, it's part of the OVV. It's part of the Once Virtual Venue. So you can find it on the YouTube, Once Virtual Venue. You can find it on the Once Somerville Facebook page or the Once Somerville website. And actually, the website is still built like a rock, like a venue roster, like a normal. It's just everything that's up there is on the OVV. So you can go to onesomerville.com or probably if you put Once Somerville, into a browser. I'm sure the first thing that comes up is probably the one So you can, um, you can see all of our shows scrolled out there. I'm going to look now. You're going to have to edit this. <laughs> going to look dumb. All right. I'm going to look though, because it's embarrassing to me that I don't know the answer. No, no. How far out should I look? Uh, however, however far out you, you want. If you want to go into September, if you have stuff into September, go for it. Let's see what I can find. Sure. Shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Of course, I'm now going to wait because I'm on Zoom, which means that my computer is loading. Uh, uh, no, yeah. Oh, you know what? If, if you <laughs> I do know some stuff that's coming up. Okay. Um, so really important, obviously, there's a... There's my thing, the let's get critical thing with um, Joan Anderman is coming up soon. And then there's um, the next one, I think, is with Julie Kramer, who's an amazing DJ and photographer. And then 
Um, after that, I think it's Jim Sullivan. But um, we're doing this really cool partnership that I should tell you about. And I'm guessing that it will already have happened by the time this hits the deck. Maybe not. But um, we're actually doing a part. No, definitely. We're actually doing a partnership with the Somerville Arts Council. Um, we're streaming their Art Beat Festival. So we are streaming three nights. Um, one of them is our own soundstage recordings of three different acts for the Somerville Arts Council, um, all being recorded under very strict management. Obviously, um, we have a very stringent plan that we wrote and printed and everybody reads and adheres to. And it's cool. There's about three people in the room at any given time. It's mm -hmm. That massive ballroom. Um, and uh, that's really cool because it's not just us. I, I keep hammering this word ecosystem, 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 because there's so much thinking going on that needs to be about this. But um, it's really cool because not only are we streaming on our channel from once, but we're also streaming from um, the burn. We're doing the back room and we're also streaming from the jungle. So there's three nights, three different performances where we're all coming together with the arts council to create art beat this year. That's and there's so, other stuff great. that's happening as well. Obviously we're not the only thing, but these venues have, you know, who might've been doing something had we not been closed or really it's been great. Like we're on one email thread together. It's really cool. That's so nice. That's yeah, so nice I really love these, it. These music venues come together as a community and, uh, yeah. and, and come together around uh, mm -hmm. a festival like art beat and, and yeah. in support of, musicians and artists and, and of each other and the community as a whole. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And this is an excellent opportunity, opportunity <laughs> for me to plug something called NEVA, which is the National Independent Venue Association. And NEVA is actually lobbying. They're actually really lobbying um, at the, it, the government level, the, you know, at the Washington level they're lobbying for um, extra care for specifically for um, performance venues. And um, they, this is, it's, it's for everybody. I mean, ecosystem, right? The, the bands don't have anywhere to tour. The venues won't be there if the van, if the bands can't come through. Like it's, it's a big thing. So Neva got like 600 very high level artists together to sign a letter and I don't know if you saw in England, I think it was, I think it was in England, they just allotted $2 billion to their theaters. Wow. Because in, in England, the theaters, the globe, I mean, these like venerable theaters were closing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's so Niva, check out Niva. It's N-I-V-A-S-S-O-C because it's the National Independent Venue Association dot com and there's so much you can do they they have it so well organized there you can copy and paste the letter you can send it right from there to your congressman woman person congressperson it's really cool yeah excellent yeah I, 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 I will definitely look into that and i urge our viewers to do the same um and we're out of time uh I bet. Where, where did the time go um, it was it was a pleasure finally being able to talk to you, JJ Gonson. I it, it it was very elusive, like trying to like I need to talk to this person. Have you heard? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, not no, not on you. It's just uh, it was it 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 it, 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 it was well worth it. Um, oh, and, you're awesome. Thank you. No, thank uh, you so much. You're awesome, and everybody should head over to the One Summer Go website. Um, you know, go to one of these virtual events, check out the YouTube page, subscribe. Um, like and share. Like and um, share. When like you look in the comments that are saved on YouTube and stuff, you'll see all kinds of links to donate to the artists. Please donate to the artists. You know what? People don't realize. You, you watch something, give the artist $3. Give them $5. What would you what would you have tipped your bartender? Right. Definitely a lot level. less than a concert ticket would have been. You know, just... Tip yeah. what you can. Tip what you can. Support the arts. Yeah. All right. Lots of links there. Dig deep. Lots of links. JJ, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bless. Thank you so much. Bye.